Hello, good afternoon and good morning. I'm Katie, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the most interesting and fun topic in the whole world, casual dating and hookup culture. There is nothing that I find more interesting or more fun to talk about than this mess. But more specifically in this video today I'm going to be talking about the things about casual dating and hookup culture that get right on my nerves. If you haven't watched any of my previous videos I've recently started dating again after taking a five year break and it's hard in the current social climate. It's literally just so confusing and so stressful and no one seems to really know what they actually want and also no one seems really happy with the way that things are happening. But is anyone going to start doing anything differently? No. Are things going to get worse? Quite probably. Anyway, I'm here with my coffee. And I hope you're here with yours too. Because this video feels like it's going to be more of like a you are my best friend and we're having a chat. Speaking of chatting, please do something in the comments. Please go say something there. I would like to hear thoughts. I would like to hear opinions. I would like to hear arguments. Let's debate. Okay, let's start by setting the scene. The dating scene, if you will. I would say that there is a spectrum. And there are two groups on the spectrum. At the one end, you have the, the serious daters, the people who are ready for marriage. They're looking for something about as serious as you can get. And then down the other end, down here, we have the opposite group, the casual daters, who just want something, anything, but mostly something physical, you know? Obviously there are people outside of these groups. Like I said, it's a spectrum. You can be anywhere on there. But if you're in your early 20s, like I am, it seems as though the vast majority of people are a lot further down this end. And I feel like the expectation to put myself down that end seems to just be increasing more and more. There seems to just have been this big shift in the dating script from previous generations. And the issue with having the script that we currently have is that it creates a lot of expectations. The more normalized the script becomes, the harder it is to do anything outside of that script. Anyway, I am going to put a disclaimer here because I feel like I need to. While I'm obviously talking about my issues with hookup culture, my issues are not at all with any specific person who enjoys casual sex. Like, good for you. I genuinely am happy for you. The last thing that I want is for this video to come off as anti-sex positive. Is that just sex negative? Anyway, I truly love the fact that there is so much less stigma and shame around wanting to just have sex because it's a fun thing to do. Trust me, I could do a whole video on the things that I love about hookup culture because like all things in life, there are goods and bads, positives, negatives. There are wins and losses. What I'm trying to say is that I do not think that there is anything inherently bad with having casual sex. I think the issue is with the culture and the expectations around what we now think sex should look like. With that out of the way, I guess this is an appropriate place to start with my problems. The first problem is the script that I mentioned before. If you look back at ye olden days, there was a very different script. It was like, boy, pick up girl car, go date, three date, then sex, you light some candles. I think this is probably an exaggeration and it wasn't quite like the movies, but what I'm trying to say is there was like a different kind of meaning around when you had sex and who you had sex with. But then you compare that to now, where the script is more like someone sends a you up text or a let's link text, and then you're at someone's house and then you're in someone's bed, and then you're kissing for five seconds, and then their clothes are off, and then your clothes are off, and then you have sex. Not much room for much else. It's almost like you're just going through the motions, like this is what happens in this order. And the assumption is that once you've done one of the steps, all of the rest are kind of going to follow in order. Like if you go to someone's house, there's kind of like an underlying assumption that you are there for sex. And let me tell you, people get confused if that's not what you're there for. One of the most insane things actually that I think about so often is how many times I have literally said to people, you can come over to my house, but we are not having sex. Do not come over if you are hoping to have sex with me because I don't want to, I don't know you. And yet they still come over expecting sex. And when I say to them, no. They're very confused because like in their heads, if you've gone to someone's house, it's you're there for sex, which is so weird. I hate it. Like I really hate that. And don't even get me started on if you're kissing someone and then tell them you don't want to have sex with them. Okay, actually no, let me go off on a tangent for just one brief second, just one second, I promise. This makes me so irrationally mad is kissing is just like a pre-sex activity. It makes me so sad and it makes me so angry because no one ever just wants to kiss for the sake of kissing. 
it's always because it's gonna lead somewhere. I hate that so much. Because what if all you wanna do is kiss? Like, what if you would just like to kiss? And now you can't do that because you do it for like 10 seconds and then they're like, let's take our clothes off and it's just like, we need to bring back kissing as a hobby on its own with nothing else. Just kissing. I don't know if you can tell, but this makes me feel violent. Anyway, this point is definitely my biggest issue with hookup culture. And it makes dating so stressful and so difficult because I don't want to meet up with someone just to find out that they're there to hook up. I would rather stay permanently single. And it's not like I can even communicate it to them because I've said to people before, this isn't a sex thing. And you would hope that by stating that I do not want sex, people might, might take that hint, but clearly not. Actually, that leads quite lovelyly into my next point, which is the issue with communication. Right from the beginning part, when there is no communication about what you want, it's just assumed, this lack of communication continues right through to the bedroom, or the couch, or the back of the car, or the shower. When sex is seen as a casual thing, you're less comfortable and also less bothered about telling the person that you're with what you want and what you enjoy. Okay, one of the big reasons that I hear a lot for why people don't communicate with people that they're seeing casually is that they're like, it's kind of weird, I don't know this person. Like, I don't really want to ruin the mood, make it awkward. Oh my God, what, what, how did, like, what? How does that ruin the mood? Please, like, this is not actually a rhetorical question, this is a genuine question. For anyone who thinks that talking about what you want ruins the mood, I would like to know why. Like literally, what is the reasoning there? Why does it ruin, how does it ruin, what the f Like literally, how, why, where, what, how is it ruining the mood? Literally, I do not get it. I do not understand. What, I feel like talking about it does, does the opposite of ruin the mood. Okay, I'll calm myself down. And if you are someone who thinks that talking about what you want will ruin the mood, I am begging you to go to my comments right now, or my DMs if it's more comfortable there, and please explain to me how it ruins the mood. Also, moving swiftly onwards, how are you comfortable enough to get like butt naked with this person and touch them all over the place, but not comfortable enough to use a few words and tell them what you want? I will tell you why actually, or I won't tell you why, but I'll give you my theory which is that it requires some level of vulnerability, some level of openness, which can be hard to do with someone that you don't trust or feel safe with. It's just a lot harder to feel like safe and secure with someone that you feel like doesn't really care that much about you as a person. And another reason actually that people have for not communicating enough is because they don't see it as anything other than casual. Like why bother teaching you what I like if this isn't going anywhere? I think I understand this reasoning more than the ruin the mood one. Because I can't, like I kind of get that if you're not gonna see someone again ever, it might just be easier to pretend you're having a good a good enough time as opposed to being like, hey buddy, you're doing a really, really bad job. Here is a list of instructions. Anywho, the only thing that I actually remember learning about sex when we were looking at like intimate relationships is that the most important part of good sex is communicating. So a lot of the casual sex that people are having is lacking in communication and also lacking in being good, which is sad. And actually that leads me on to my next point. Wow, I love it so much when my ideas just kind of smush together in a beautiful way. My next point is how people just sort of pretend to be enjoying themselves. I read this really, really good book called Faking It. I'll put some links to it somewhere because I would highly recommend reading it. But it talks about how people are kind of just putting on a performance when they're having sex. And I think that this kind of goes back to the script stuff that I was talking about before. Because part of that script is that the hooking up finishes when you, you both, you know, finish. That is the script and we are all actors. So it either happens or it fake happens. Anyway, I'm like obsessed with this idea that instead of people prioritizing enjoying sex, they're prioritizing looking like they're enjoying sex. The reasons for this are numerous and plenty. I don't know if I have time to go into it here. Perhaps I'll go into it another time in another video if you aren't all sick of hearing me talk about sex by now. I can't remember what my point was here, but a appearances, I suppose. Whatever. My next issue with hookup culture is that it is normalized treating people as disposable. Especially with dating apps because it's like there are always a billion more people right there to swipe through. So if someone isn't giving you exactly what you want, it's pretty easy to just kind of chuck them away and move on to the next person. It is just so dehumanizing. Even the language that we use is so dehumanizing. Like bodies? What is your body count? I don't think those are bodies. 
I hope that they're not bodies, I hope that they're people. So it would be quite nice if everyone treated them as such. And this actually does a little circle back around to my communication point because if you're seeing someone as just like this like placeholder object that really could be anyone, why bother learning about what they like and why bother teaching them what you like. Anyway, I feel like I've been talking for so long and I have so much more to say. Like I could talk about this for several hours, several long hours in fact, several days perhaps. I just love this stuff. It is so interesting to me. But yes, I have more to say and maybe I'll say it at some point, one day. But wow, putting this shit into words has made me realize how bad things kind of suck. Actually wait another thing just before I quickly leave. This is actually maybe like a whole separate video, but like the fact that people are getting kink shamed for like being vanilla basically now it's insane to me because if you say to people like yeah i kind of like it when sex is a like gentle intimate nice experience people start like crying and throwing up okay this may be a bit of an exaggeration but there is just so much pressure to be like freaky or kinky or whatever and anyone who doesn't want that is just like vanilla and boring you can normalize kinks without trying to denormalize anything else i hope that makes sense okay katie stop talking that is all that I have to say today. Reminder that if you have and enjoy having casual sex, this is not a personal attack at all. If it's working for you, then I'm literally jealous. And if I didn't hate everything about everything, I would be right there with you. Like I said, there are so many good things about casual sex being normalized and destigmatized. And for a lot of people, it's working really well and doing good and being a positive experience, which would be perfect if it didn't have the effect of creating expectations for everybody. I can't figure out what I'm trying to say here. I have no clue what point I'm trying to make. Please, someone else finish this thought for me. If you know what I'm saying, tell me what I'm saying. Other than that, bye. Comment, like, and subscribe right now, please, or I'll be so upset. Um, okay, love you, bye.